before we start, I would like to ask your help to hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and smash the bell. Smash like hawk. Anatomical structures and pelvic spaces, a must to know for everyone we, uh, before we perform our laparoscopic surgery. Right, laparoscopy allows a highly magnified and close up view. This difficult task is assigned to our next speaker, Dr. Lokapin, graduated from University of Malaysia in 2006. So, early years of his career in Gani Laparoscopy Training Center, Hospital Sungai Petani, Kedah, shaped his interest and skill in laparoscopy. So after completions of postgraduate study, uh, we had Master UK and Master in ONG. 2014, he further go for minimal access surgery training in India and Master in Biotech Human Assisted Reproductive and Biology. Wow. The third one, the floor is yours. Anatomical structures and pelvic spaces. Okay, hi. Uh, I share my screen first. Can you guys hear me? Yes, can hear you, can see you. Very handsome today. You can share your screen. <laughs> Normally not handsome, is it? Yeah, yeah, today more handsome, okay? Normally handsome, today more handsome. Uh, can you see the screen now? Yes, yes. Uh, can you put in the full view? Okay, let me search for the full view. Bottom right here. Okay. Alright, uh, good morning everyone. It's still morning, right? Okay. So um, this is my presentation or sort of like sharing about anatomy in laparoscopic surgery. This is my first uh, Zoom presentation. I hope everything is all right, okay? Um, I'm looking for some uh, interaction later on. So if you guys have any, uh, I mean interaction, please type in the chat box, okay? So the menu for today is uh, I'm going through um, anatomy of learning as well, anatomy of entry, uh, basic anatomy, extended anatomy, about the spaces, ureters, and vessels, and last of course, I end up with the continuation of anatomy of learning. Okay, so uh, first off, what is anatomy of learning? Basically, this is something that I got from uh, one of the endometriotic uh, surgeon, Dr. Nicholas Ferguson uh, from US. First of all, um, we must, I mean, for the juniors or for myself, sometimes we, um, I was thinking that sometimes surgery, you look at it in a series of steps. But I think this is not a correct way to look at it. It may work in ordinary situation, but when I, I mean, when I experience in surgery, sometimes a lot of variation and we just go in and a lot of scarring, addition, and all these steps is actually um, actually, it's still useful, but it's like um, it can be sometimes become useless because when it's too much of addition, too much of scarring, you are just paralyzed, and some people will just abort the surgery, or some people will just maintain to continue the surgery and may injure the patient. So, uh, what Dr. Nicholas Ferguson is advising everyone is like when we learn surgery, you must be like a three legs to a stool. Uh, not this two, uh, this two, okay? So, alright. So what is the first leg of this uh, stool? The first leg of the stool is mainly what I'm presenting today. It's a knowledge about anatomy. Okay, an expert surgeon is a master of every anatomical structure in the vicinity of their operative field. And you must know about all the anatomy the relationship. And when we know about this anatomy, nothing will become uh, scary because you know that where you are going and how you want to complete your uh, task okay and when you do this learning about anatomy is not just about operating under supervision because sometimes when you operate your supervisor may not tell you about all the anatomy of course some uh, supervisors are very good 
and they will just go through with you uh, which is this uh, artery, which is this nerve and then you just uh, learn from there. Uh, secondly, one person has to be uh, learning about this anatomy from all resources such as books, videos and even cadaver dissection if it's available to you. Okay, the second link I will review at the end, okay? Alright, so um, as for my present uh, sharing today, I will be going through the anatomy of entry which will be more elaborated by Prof. Aizura later and then a simple anatomy, a detailed anatomy and of course the most difficult part like godlike anatomy, very detailed, that one I cannot go through because that one you need uh, maybe a one day or maybe a few month course to go through it. Alright, so anatomy of entry. Basically in the body, whenever before we operate, this is the surface anatomy that we see and there's a few surface uh, landmark that's important. First one is the xiphoid process, the left costal cartilage, um, the left midcalvicular uh, line and then the most important is uh, in our laparoscopy is this uh, anterior superior elect spine AIS okay, and also the umbilicus. Uh, we usually in our entry of this port, we, we look at these few landmarks. I think uh, Dr. Prof. Azura will be uh, discussing in detail later. Okay. Secondly, uh, this is the few muscles of the abdominal wall. We got external oblique, rectus abdominis, transverse, and the internal oblique. Okay. So for anatomy of entry, so when we uh, insert the port, the usually the I mean, the most common first port that we insert is at the umbilicus. So, um, it's always a good practice that um, the port are inserted slightly 45 degree. And when I started uh, my training as a registrar, um, I observed some of my specialists sometimes um, a bit, uh, how to say, um, a bit, a bit uh, cautious. And then every time when we do the laparoscopy and uh, she would just insert 45 and you keep repeating to me that ah remember ah, to insert 45 because 45 then you won't go straight you won't uh, hit the vessels but actually um, what we must really understand is that BMI play a big role in insertion because if it's a very slim lady then the vessels can be very near especially the bifurcation of the uh, I mean aorta later on to the iliac, common iliac is around, you can see from here, is 6 plus minus 3 so if the patient is in, it can be as near as 3 cm to the vessels so of course when you do 45 degree insertion then you will actually avoid the vessels however, if the patient is uh, having thicker abdominal wall like the lady here you have to go really perpendicular okay because if you imagine if you do a 45 actually you are not doing a laparoscopy you are doing a fat fatoscopy you are <laughs> putting the port into the fat okay because um, one of my experience is like um, uh, I was um, I mean operating with one of the surgeons I mean and then uh, she keep on saying, oh, you must 45, you must 45. So, uh, end up, um, the port keep on going into the fat and doing a lot of fatoscopy. And then um, the umbilicus is basically being, uh, being, being, being <laughs> how to say, uh, <laughs> it's like destroyed at that, all right? But anyway, um, it's still a very safe practice to go 45, but if it's uh, really a plum lady, you have to gauge and then you go um, accordingly the angle. Okay, I think uh, Dr. Aizura, uh, Prof. Aizura will explain uh, further regarding this uh, insertion. Okay, so mainly uh, thin 45 is a uh, plum and go directly. Okay, all right. Uh, doing Google fatoscopy uh, is not a real term. I just I just think it up myself, all right? Okay, then the second port and ancillary port is usually at the side, okay? And then uh, at the side, usually our main aim is to avoid the vessels, which is the inferior epigastric vessels, okay? And this is from outside, all right? You can see that um, this is the vessel coming up here, and then 
This area here is both the innervation of ileo inguinal in ileo hypogastric nerve. So the golden rule is to have a uh, two finger breath uh, superior and medial to the ASIS. ASIS is the prominent bone here that uh, you will be feeling it no matter how fat you are. You you feel the you feel the bone I mean bony structure at the pelvis there. All right, and then um, for me, I also also use the golden rules of uh, from the ASIS to the umbilicus uh, one third. So this area usually is the ancillary point. Okay. And I think uh, this insertion report will be more detailed with uh, Prof. Aizura, okay? And if you... This one is from outside. So sometimes one of the... Uh, the safe method that we do is uh, we put a camera into the umbilicus and then as we transluminate from inside, then we can see the uh, inferior epigastric vessel better. So we try to avoid that. So anywhere around the abdomen is fine as long as you don't uh, hit the vessels, okay. And if you go from inside, okay, there is a uh, threefold, okay. This is the inside anatomy. If you can use the camera, you can see that uh, the the middle, the the most midline uh, fold is called median umbilical fold, okay. This is a remnants of uricus, and we have the at bit side is called medial umbilical fold, and here there are so remnants of umbilical arteries. And there's no vessels, but the one that lateral umbilical fold, the one at the side here, is the one that contain the inferior epigastric vessel. So if you can, from inside, you trace, you can see where's the vessel. Then your ancillary port, I mean ancillary port is your second and third port. Try to avoid that vessel. Okay. So uh, this is about the anatomy of entry. Okay. Okay, second of all is, uh, I'm going to talk about basic anatomy. I think basic anatomy is what uh, a lot of uh, people usually see, or oh, this is a lecture about anatomy. So uh, we can skip this, we go for we go for a break or go for a makan, okay, not during Ramadan of course. Okay, so if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well now. So this is something being said by Albert Einstein. And then uh, when I do surgery, I always feel that it's very complicated. There are so many things to take care of. But when I went to UMNC during my master year, um, one of my surge surgeon, uh, Prof. B. K. Lim, a gynae oncologist, I think during surgery, he said something very simple that I find it, yeah, it's something that I can uh, relate to, okay? Basically, it's about basic anatomy. It's like, when we're doing, uh, because he is a gynae onco, so he do a lot of this debulking of, of the, I mean, the, the cancer, everything. Then he was telling us that um, surgery very simple. You see, the front is the bladder, the back is the rectum or the bowel. We try to avoid injury to these two things. And then at the side is a ureter, mainly the ureter. And of course, there's vessel, there's nerve, and you must uh, avoid all that. So. In this simple form of anatomy, I feel that oh, okay, everything quite simple. It's like you just need to avoid the front, the back, and the sides. But of course, there's more uh, complicated things inside because as we explore, you can see that the front is not that complicated, the back is not, but the sides will be a bit complicated. But I will explain it further. Okay. So for basic anatomy, I think everyone should know this is the uterus. This is the bladder, okay? This is the rectum. This is the ovary. And this is the fallopian tubes, okay? And all right. So the first question of today is um, testing if everyone's still uh, alive, not sleeping. Can you tell me in your chat group, uh, chat box, <laughs> what is this uh, structure here? Can you all see the arrow? Hello. Yes, yes, yes. The panelists only can reply you, <laughs> not okay, the okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Type okay. the chat box uh, yes, to make sure yes. you alive, ah. Uh. Uh, round ligament, round ligament. Okay. So, so all right, round ligament. Okay. Wow. Okay. Basically, this is to test that you are still present with us in the lecture and not a uh, Ponten class. Because this is a very simple question, okay? All right.
Okay. So I think uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of attendee who are alive today. Great. Okay. So basically, uh, one of the thing that get confused always is I mean, if you see this very clear anatomy, you have no problem uh, differentiating between round ligament and the fallopian tube. The challenge is when there is a tuber ovary mass and everything here like get crumpled together. So how would you determine which one is which? So uh, my my main my main differentiating is I look for the fibrous end and then uh, for round ligament is uh, going into the inguinal region and into the ring and that's why uh, it's easier for me to recognize the round ligament and the round ligament is at the front and uh, round ligament has no like mesentery like, like meso mesofallopian there's a lot of vessels and this one only got one accompany small vessel below the round ligament so this is the method to differentiate these two yeah confirm everyone alive <laughs> okay so okay i will go to the so everyone understand this is a basic anatomy okay and then the second thing okay now i'm moving forward since i have uh, confirmed everyone is alive so for basic anatomy like i said the front and the back is uh very simple uh very easy to avoid because okay first thing is that we look at the back the rectum okay the dictum is fat belongs to the rectum okay mainly it's just like you 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 have a fat you usually don't want the fat <laughs> you want the fat to be other people <laughs> so the dictum is the fat belong to the rectum okay and then the fat when between the uterus and the rectum you can see from the photo here is called the non fascia okay and here is a very uh, simple video uh, showing how you Okay, can you see the video here? Alright. Okay, so you can see this is the uterus. And then the right plane is here. Okay, can you see the this is the fat here and below here is the rectum. So when it's being obliterated, anything, then you must always uh, cut and make sure that the fat belongs to the rectum. Basically the fat doesn't belong to you, okay? It's like we are gynae, we are taking the uterus and the fat go to other people, okay? You guys don't want to be fat, right? Okay, alright. And how about the front? The front also the same. Fat belongs to the bladder. As you can see, here is the bladder base and here got a lot of, here a bit of fat here and here the vesicle vagina space and here is the cervix and vagina. The fat go to the bladder as well and this is one of the video that shows this is a uv4 we try vesicle 4 and here's a bit of the fat and the fat all you push down to the bladder okay so the dictum is fat belong to the rectum fat belong to the rectum okay i keep repeating this because it may come out in the crease all right okay the next one we must go into a detailed anatomy okay uh, detailed anatomy, of course, if I want to go through everything, it will be very detailed and it will be like just me mumbling around all the names that you won't stick in your mind, okay? So, I'm not going to go through every compartment, every space because going through that is uh, contraproductive you know? because it's like you, you won't be remembering everything that I say. I can tell you, okay, I got this space, bordered by what, contain what, but then won't be effective okay so basically i'm not giving you a fish okay i'm teaching you how to fish all right so i'm giving you a very uh, brief like a rough guideline of what is the spaces in the pelvis okay okay this is a true intra op picture okay and then here in front dimension to you the front is the bladder the back is the rectum and the side is the uh ureter vessels and nerve okay so when we talk about space when you look at later when you look at a lot of surgeon videos they will tell you about or oh, with this pararectal this uh, paravesical then you get a bit lost at where is paravesical where is uh, this pararectal actually the naming of the space is very simple okay it's like 
you can see here this is the this this area is supposed to be uh, the uterus but already cut off and this is the vagina okay so you can see this is the bladder right in front of the bladder is a uh, before the bladder so it, bladder is vesicle so pre vesicle space so when you talk about pre vesicle you know that this is the space in front of the uh, bladder and then if it's para vesicle space para means side like para parotid okay parotid is a parotid otid is the ear so parotid is near or beside the ear and then here you can see this is the rectum and this is the vagina so between the rectum and the vagina is rectal vagina space so actually when you hear about the spaces some of you all may get very uh, lost but actually you just have to listen to what is the name of the space then you roughly know where is the space okay and then of course the para rectal space means that is the space beside the rectum para vesicle beside the vesicle para rectum beside the rectum and then here the last one is the another uh, we call this uh, sacrum sacrum promontory and between the sacrum and the rectum we call this pre sacral or retro rectal space okay so these are the few space that you must uh, get accustomed to and one of the space that more more people more uh, any laparoscopy surgeon will be talking about is these two space that last time when i was uh, listening to all these uh, very expert surgeon operating like oh, this is uh, Okabayashi, this is Lasco. Sometimes I get very lost what is Lasco because it doesn't follow the anatomy. Okay. Uh, what is the view of this picture? Okay, someone chat. Very okay, good. Corder view. Uh, this one? This one is from the laparoscopic. Means I put a camera in. This is from the uh, umbilical view. So so it's from the top okay uh yeah you did i answer you uh lee z y okay i'll move forward all right so it's the same thing we are going we're looking from the from the laparoscopic view okay and i want to bring attention to this para rectal space okay this para rectal space is actually divided further into okabayashi space and also let's go space all right the reason they are being named this is because the surgeon named after themselves all right but then if you want to be more uh, i mean easier to remember is let's go is lateral lateral para rectal space because it's at the side and then this all okabayashi is uh, medial okay can you see it's more medial and it's divided because there's a ureter in between them so this this both area is being divided by these two space, all right, which is the Lasco and Okabayashi uh, pararectal space. Later, when you see a lot of uh, expert surgeon they operating, you will hear a lot of this because uh, they are their own significant. Okay, for instance, uh, this media media which is the Okabayashi is a uh, they contain a superior hypogastric nerve, and then. Um, this surgeon, Mr. Obakayashi, is the one that performed the first nerve sparing radical hysterectomy. As for the lateral pararectal space, it's best for dissection that going forward you can see this is the ureter. Alright, this is the medial side, this is the lateral, and as you go down before the paravesical space, you can see there's a uterine artery. So, usually the dissection for are you trying to you can go from this uh, lateral paralactic space all right so the media is okaya bayashi and the lateral is let's go all right okay next we go to the ureter okay so for this ureter i will need a bit of interaction from the attendee okay so the ureter uh first they started off from the psoas muscle going down to cross the common elect at their bifurcation so, um, you think the ureter is at the medial or lateral side of the psoas muscle? Hello? Medial, okay. Wow. 
It's like one person say media, everyone will just start media, right? <laughs> Follow the crowd better, right? Okay, okay, thing is media, all right. Okay, let me count how many attendees. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, wow, 17 out of 300, 18, 19, hi boss, <laughs> 20, hi Nolin, <laughs> thanks for coming. So okay, I think I just move forward now. Nah. Just I don't want to drag on too long. Okay, all right. So it's at the media aspect of soas muscle. Okay, and then it crosses to the uh, medially as well at the bifurcation of common ilia. Okay, and you can see this is the sacral promontory. This is where it goes into the pelvis. All right. Okay, the next question is. When it crosses, it goes medial or lateral to the internal iliac and its anterior division. Okay, so this is the internal iliac, and then this is the ureter. So you think it's the medial or lateral? This is a bonus question, I think. Okay. All right, media, media. Yeah, a lot of shy people here. Huh? We got three hundred attendee so far. I think we got thirty people listening or answering. <laughs> so okay lah, not bad lah, ten percent. Okay, so the answer is media from this picture. Okay, and then the ureter also it goes. Um, medial, alright, okay, I'll give you the answer. Lah. This one very simple, okay. So, a lot of medial, medial, so ureter actually runs quite medial to a lot of this uh, lateral, I mean the side, side uh, vessels, lah. okay. It's also medial to the IT ligament. In front, pelvic ligaments is the one that uh, supplies the ovary, okay. Alright, then the last question for ureter is this one is the London Bridge of Pelvis, lah, okay. Yes. Is water under the bridge. So I don't want to write this water under the bridge because too many people <laughs> using that way. So I call it London Bridge. Why? Because as a child, we everyone know like London Bridge is falling down, right? So if you are a gynae or you need to know about pelvis, the ureter, you cannot run away from knowing the ureter is under the uterine artery because the uterine artery is the London Bridge because it's water under the bridge all right and yeah so this is a common most important question that I always ask the trainee or any student because if you don't know this then uh, it will probably get extended <laughs> all right okay so again uh, from this uh, diagram you can see that the ureter is below the uterine Artery and is very close proximity, okay, and it transverses the cardinal ligaments, and it crosses again medially in the vaginal fornix into the bladder. Can you see here? And initially, it goes very near to a few space: the pararectal space, the paravesical space, and the vesico-vaginal space. This is how we have to integrate everything: the space and the ureter and it insert into the bladder tricon all right okay so everyone have fun with the london bridge of pelvis you can remember that easier right so next time you say london bridge of pelvis then you remember my name okay all right so we are done with ureter okay so another thing that uh i i uh, also noted is that the ureter actually coming down from the uh abdomen into the the pelvis they actually have different different uh how to say uh vessel supply all right and you can see that from the abdomen is the vessel supply is more medially and then in the pelvis area is more naturally however the ureter has their own blood supply of mesentery but in during surgery preferably 
we don't want to injure the vessel. So if let's say you need to retract the ureter, we preferably retract it laterally. Okay. And here is one of the video. Okay. Right. Sorry, uh, I'm in clinic. So it's my phone. Okay. Right. So this is when one wants to dissect from the lateral side, the ureter carries its own. Okay, so this thing is dissection from the left, from the lateral side. Okay, and you can see that the ureter actually has its own mesentery for blood supply. Okay, and as you go down, you can see that there is a branch of uterine artery to the ureter. And looking at this uterine, this branch, you must make sure that you dissect it and then uh, as it bleeds, you make sure you must uh, reduce the bleeding, okay? Atomize it and then you need to separate it, okay? And then here is one of the, we call ureter tunnel. Actually, it's not uh, really a tunnel. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, where am I now? All right. So actually, this, uh, this is some people, a lot of people call this the ureteric tunnel, but actually it's a wrong term, but it's not rigid, it's not misnomer, it's not a tunnel. It's actually, it's a ligament, cervical uh, ureteric ligament, okay? It's where the ureters go in, and then you can see that there is actually two veins that connects from the cervix to the bladder. And this vein can tend to bleed when you dissect the site. So for this vein, you can either tie it off, clamp it or clip it. And as you clip it and you cut, you actually lateralize the lateralize the ureter further to avoid to avoid all this injury. Okay. So from here you can see the ureteric uh, canal and then here's some of the tissue and the vein that you need to cut and lateralize further. Alright. Okay, then we go to a more complicated uh, detailed anatomy of the vessels. Okay, so in the pelvis, the main thing of the supply of the pelvis organs is we're looking at the uh, internal iliac artery. Okay, because the external iliac, they have no distributary to the pelvis. They only go to the abdominal wall and form the inferior epigastric artery, the one that you need to avoid when you're going into the ancillary port. Okay. And the main thing we are main concern is usually we're looking at the few uh, arteries is the uterine artery. Okay, so all right. So this is the external iliac, external iliac vein. All right, and from here we can see the internal iliac artery, and then there's a anterior and posterior uh, division, and the and one of the division will form the uterine vein artery. Ar artery here is being clipped off, okay? And going further up is the superior uh, vesicle artery, all right? Let me show the video so that you can get more... All right. Okay, so this is the ureter here and the right common iliac artery here. Okay, so as we dissect down, okay, you can see that this is the internal iliac, and then this is the this is the posterior division, this is the anterior division, okay. And then we go down further, you can see this is the uterine artery, the superior vesicle artery on top, and it goes actually transverse quite a long way down. And then as we dissect, must be careful that there's actually the uterine vein below the uterine artery. Okay. You can see this is fully dissected. Alright. And you can see this is one of the diagram that okay. You can see the ureter is here, and then this is the uterine artery, the uterine vein. Okay. Right. And the uterine vein. Um, it drains into a, initially was a I mean a big web of the vein and then as it drains, it drains into the the single uh, vein at the side. 
Okay, this is the card uh, you try and touch. Okay. And then the other branches is the obturator, artery and nerve at the side here. Okay. So this is the laparoscopic view of the vessels. Okay, usually we go here if we need to do a lot of this nodal, nodal dissection of gynae onco. But as a basic, maybe you just uh, have to roughly know about this, but not in detail yet. Okay. As you go along, you do more surgery, then you may need to know more detail about the area here. Okay. All right. So, okay. Then the last part is about nerve. Okay. The nerve for laparoscopic gynae, uh, the three nerve that is main importance is the hypogastric nerve, the obturator nerve, and the genital femoral nerve. Okay. And basically, for the obturator nerve, it comes down in the bifurcation of the iliac vessels. All right. You can see from here, this is the obturator nerve and it supplies into the medial part of the muscles and the skin area for the sensation. Okay. And for the genital femoral nerve, it goes uh, alongside with this psoas muscle and it supplies the sensation of the upper anterior thigh and mon pubis. Okay. As for the pelvic nerve or the sorry the hypogastric nerve, it it go to the, paras the parasympathetic plexus, superior hypogastric plexus, and this one can also supply to the bladder. It may cause some bladder dysfunction or some dyspareunia is being injured. Okay, and this is the nerve that you can see from here. So this is the obturator nerve going down, and this is beside here is the genital femoral nerve. So usually this is the psoas muscle and the usual. During surgery, we, we call this nerve as the gr girlfriend nerve, okay, because genital femoral nerve, okay. The girlfriend to the psoas muscle. This nerve is usually smaller and the obturator nerve is bigger, right? And if you see that the ureter and we can actually dissect down the ureter and you can see that the hypogastric nerve is below here. So this is a three nerve that uh, mainly we look for uh, in gynae surgery, laparoscopic surgery, okay? And if you need to know more complicated about all this nerve and everything, then you need to go into, uh, we call this neuropelviology with this uh, prof, uh, Mark Kosover, which is a very detailed course. They have, don't know what, uh, first level, second level, third level that really go into which nerve, which nerve, and then they have their own, uh, this procedure to reduce the pelvic pain, okay? So I won't go so detail because um, I don't see any. <laughs> I mean, I don't see any. Uh, I mean, it would take a lot of time to go over all these details, and people cannot really absorb everything. Okay, all right. Um, okay. So last part is uh, this uh, anatomy of learning. So just now I I told you guys that I would come back to this anatomy of learning. So the three legs to the stool. The first leg is uh, this uh, knowledge of anatomy. So the second leg would be the knowledge of technique. So mainly you must know about uh, the ability to manipulate and complete your task okay, without any undue bleeding or injury. Okay? It's about mastery of one equipment. So the previous... Oh, my video is not off, is it? No issue, no issue, Dr. Lo, you can continue. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. So, alright. So, the... So, it's like what uh, Prof. Akram does now have mentioned, Dr. Akram has mentioned that we need to know about our equipment, the energy base, and why we set that this certain way, and why we use the equipment a certain way. Because when there is a certain circumstances that changes, we need to uh, change our setting as well, alright, and the equipment that we use. And the third leg is a knowledge of intention, meaning that when you go for surgery, to do the surgery, you must understand what is your intention. Usually very simple is like uh, hysterectomy. You want to remove the uterus and preserve the support structure. This is a simple one. But those who are different, I mean those are complicated, you need a surgical uh, judgment. For instance, uh, when you see an endometriotic power, you need to judge whether do you remove the bowel or do you just 
uh, scrape off the power or you should just leave it for medical therapy. So mainly this uh, will need more experience when you know about your uh, intention during the surgery. Because sometimes not all surgery is the same because some patients they want to get pregnant then maybe the way you do it must be more fertility principally and you must have a look at the patient and you must judge individually. Alright? Okay, so this is uh, today's sharing by me, the anatomy of learning, entry, basic anatomy, extended anatomy. Okay? And for reference, I'd like to thank Chua for uh, I mean, giving me a reference of how to, I mean, go on about this uh, talk. And the video here is uh, by Dr. Putambeka, uh, already shared in uh, this web search. And then I also uh, refer to Prof. Uh, Dr. Mishra, uh, my Sifu in a uh, World Laparoscopic Hospital in the Laparoscopic Anatomy of Pelvis. Okay. So thank you for not sleeping. Any burning question or comments? Thank you, Dr. Lord Kaping. It's very clear anatomy lecture. I think this is one of the lecture that everyone alive in anatomical lecture. <laughs> very well presented. Thank you so much. I think everyone is very clear of your presentations, uh, your London Bridge, your girlfriend nerve. I think everyone can remember better now and remember your name. Any <laughs> questions from the participants? I don't see any questions. Okay. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Lord Kaping. We okay. shall wait for a toilet break for five minutes. Then after right. we we'll come back again for the next talk. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Lo. Can you stop sharing your screen? All right. uh, okay. This I need to learn. All right. Stop sharing. All right. Okay. Thank you. We'll wait for five minutes for your official uh, official physical toilet break first. Then we'll come back again for the next talk. Okay. Okay, we come to the end. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell and then share it all away.